Welcome back to this great academy lecture on atomic structure. And what I want to just do with you right now is to give you the overview of how the electrons are arranged and some of the features of the electrons. So we know that two is the maximum capacity that any electron can occupy, the spherical s orbitals, the dumbbell p orbitals, or the d orbitals. Now, there's a few things that you have to know about these electrons. And the first thing, there are three anyway for sure, is that electrons will always try to occupy the lowest available energy level. Well, that's very obviously why they're negative. And the lowest available energy level is the one closest to the nucleus. So they're always being pulled down. What's in the nucleus that might attract them? Those positive protons. So that's why electrons don't spend time up in those excited energy levels. They drop down as uh, uh, the moment uh, position becomes available, they will drop down and emit that piece of energy, which you could see in the line emission spectrum that Bohr saw. Now, the other thing is you can never fit more than two. There's a maximum of two electrons in any of the orbitals. So I'm going to just move that in each of the sublevels and in the orbitals. OK, so in the orbitals, you can only have a maximum of two. Now, and the other thing about it is the electrons have to have opposite spins. So one going up and the other going down. They have opposite spins. So the three things, they occupy the lowest available energy. Only two can get into any orbital. And the third one is they have opposite spins. OK, now. <laughs> All people were theorizing about uh, these electrons that uh, Bohr had put into fixed levels of energy. And Schrodinger had put a, um, a boundary round where the probability of finding them was high. And one of the characters that you have to know is called Louis de Broglie, or Louis de Brogue, as it's properly pronounced. And he said, oh, is it a wave? Is it a particle? Now, remember, Bohr had set the ball rolling, but everybody else was coming along with their different theories. So he didn't quite know whether it behaved. Sometimes it had properties of a wave, these electrons, and it also had properties of particles. So he started to call it a wave particle dualism. Dualism is like a duet on a piano where two people are playing. Dualism, the two were working hand in hand, unlike this little cartoon. Now then comes along one of the most famous uh, scientists in this field, and his name was Heisenberg. And of course, maybe you, you know a little bit about him from a different reason, for a different reason. But Heisenberg is famous for his uncertainty principle. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, imagine that the entire area has gone completely black and you are not able to use your eyes to see, but you have a torchlight and you're searching the large um, gym that you're in. It's completely dark and you're looking for a tiny little uh, thing floating around, a bit like um, the thing in Harry Potter that they were going for the Quidditch match. They were looking for the, what was it called? I can't remember, the widget. And they were looking for it. Okay, so imagine you couldn't see it and you couldn't hear it, but you had a torchlight to find it. And at some point, the torchlight would actually fall on the actual widget or the flying, um, what was it? I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. The point is that the device you use for looking for the electron is a piece of energy, either light energy or a wave pulse energy. It could be lots of things. And these, that piece of energy striking the electron now means that the electron is no longer there. It's taken that energy and it's become excited. So he said, you cannot know at the same time the position and the velocity of an electron. And he's famous for that. Now he's going to bow out for that. And of course, you can see that this side, you can't know both at the same time, the position and the velocity. Now, if I move myself down here, this was my little joke. An electron is driving down the highway and a policeman pulls him over. Sir, do you realize you were traveling at 85 miles per hour? That's your velocity. The electron goes, oh, great. Now I'm lost. He doesn't know his position. Anyway, so the electrons are actually going to be down 
from the left. So you, they're going to occupy the lowest available energy level. And that's going to be the first energy level is called one. The second one is called two. So you have the one S and then you have the two S because they're both spherical. And then you have three P sublevels, three PX or one sublevel, three PX one, three PX, three P oh, um, two, 2px, 2py, and 2pz. And then they are all in the second. So you can see two in the s and six in total with the three p's. Now it's much easier to see that you fill from left to right, two and then two and six, and then two, six, eight, and 10. So what you've got to do is much easier to see if you actually look at it in another way. Now, I have the periodic table up. This is what you would see in any exam. And you can see that there are two on the first row. There are eight on the second row. Oh, what, what am I doing here? So this is where the 1S would be filled. The 2S would be filled here. The 2P will fill up six. Now, this number at the top was more or less discovered and developed by Henry Mosley, who used x-rays to find the number of positives. This number is called the atoms number, the atomic number. And this number also tells you, we call it in our school, the PEP, the position, the protons, and the electrons, PEP. -E the protons, four protons, so beryllium has four protons. It's normally got four electrons in the neutral, and it has the position fourth in the periodic table. Now, so if I were to realize that we have the energy levels. Now, this is as far as you have to go. I've written little boxes. This represents the first energy level and it's the 1S. Then you have the 2S and the 2P. This is the 2PX, the 2PY and the 2PZ. Then both of those belong to the energy level N equal to two. This is the N equal to one. So there's one sublevel, one orbital in the one, the n equal to one energy, the n equal to two has four orbitals, an s, a px, a py, and a pz, two sublevels, a p sublevel and an s sublevel. Then the third one, the third energy level has an s, three p's, and three d's. And strangely enough, the four s starts with the four s, the four p, the four d, and the four f, they're not on your course, but they're there. This is as far as you have to go because you've only got to go for the first 36 elements. So what you have here is you have, this is the lowest available energy. The electrons will fill these up from the bottom upwards. It's like filling a glass with water. The water will fill down at the very bottom. Now I'm going to take myself over here out of the way so that you can see what I'm up to. Okay, so if I were to go back one or two steps, to the periodic table and I were looking at hydrogen, I have one electron. Helium has two, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So let's just look at the next two. Okay, so if I look at hydrogen, there's the one electron. You can see it's occupied the lowest available energy level. Then you would write it as 1s1. The next thing is helium. Helium has two electrons. So you can see the two of them are inside this 1s. They have opposite spins and they have occupied the lowest available energy. So they're obeying all the rules for the electronic configuration. How might you write that? Well, you would write HE and you'd go 1s2. It's a superscript, right? You put the two up there like squared, but it doesn't mean squared. It means two electrons occupying the 1s. Now, Lithium has three, so you've got one, two, and the third one has to fit in here because these are full. So lithium goes like that, and you'd write 1s2, 2s2. Now, beryllium occupies that one, and that will be 1s2, 2s2. Okay, now, boron. Boron has one, car, one electron, and that electron occupies this. Now, you'd sort of say, what happens next? This is a sublevel equal in all ways. Now, this one is another rule. 
And it's the only one I haven't mentioned. They're occupying the lowest um, energy level. They have opposite spins once they're in the orbitals. The third thing is they will occupy this level singly before doubling up. If you have ever wanted to upset somebody on a bus, maybe not with public, uh, you know, nowadays, but in the past, if you sat beside somebody and there was a double free, that would really upset people. But this is literally what electrons do. They fill up singly before doubling up like on a bus. So that is hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron. So let's look at boron. It'll be 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, y0, z0. Now you don't have to write the zeros. Uh, you, there's just an assumption. Okay. The next one, boron, carbon. Carbon sits with its electron in the second uh, p orbital, py. They're going to fill them up singly, and that's going to be 2px1y1z0. And then nitrogen. Nitrogen occupies this one. And how would you write it? 2px1y1z1. Now, this is particularly important because it is very stable. One in each sublevel, um, in one in each orbital, the p orbitals, makes this configuration. This is an electron configuration. It makes it particularly stable. And so when you want to answer questions, if in doubt, draw the electronic configuration. And if you see it nicely arranged like that, it means that it's got uh, more stable than others. Now, nitrogen. The next one is oxygen. And when I have an oxygen, now you're doubling up and you see it's got an opposite spin. So that's an oxygen. And how would you write that? 1s2, 2s2, 1s2, 2s2, 2px2, y1z1. And it's over there. And then you have uh, fluorine, which is a very vicious element. It's always looking, it's like a drug addict. It's we're looking for just one more shot and it's looking for an electron to occupy that. And you'd write X2, Y2, Z1. And then yeah, is completely stable because it has not only just filled up that sublevel, it's filled up all the orbitals in the second energy level. And therefore it is exceedingly stable. Now you can go and you can take the next one um, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, and you will find that you could write out the electronic configuration for every one of them until you come to here. The 4s is actually lower, even though it's actually below 3d, it's actually lower in energy and it gets filled up first before you fill the 3d. Now you can put two in every one of those orbitals. You can put um, you occupy these ones singly. The D has five orbitals. Now we call the P's X, Y, and Z. We do not have names for the separate D's uh, orbitals. We don't call them A, B, C, and D or E or anything like that. We don't have names for them. So we just draw them out like that, like a piece of music uh, with five spaces and four lines in that case, the opposite really. But you do, you will find that when you get up as far as here, you'll be filling those up singly and doubling up. But of course, there are two exceptions to the rule and you have to know the exceptions. So the exceptions are as follows. Now, get out of the way, Stephanie. OK, so you want to look for chromium. Now, chromium is element number 24. So it's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So you've gone up singly, doubled up and 20. Now, so two, uh, if you see chromium there, it's number 24. So if I just go back here, you might say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And you'd be forgiven to think that that would be the right way to do it. So you'd have filled that up. But strangely, this is an exception. Now, you remember what I said about nitrogen? It was much more stable than oxygen, even though uh, it was because these were filled up singly. So it is, uh, these ones were sing filled up singly. So it is with this. So what actually happens is this little electron gets moved from there up to here. You have to put up with my technology here. So it's now 3D5 and 4S1, a half filled 3D must be more stable than not quite filled and then this one filled. 
And of course, there is one other exception. So CR is an exception and CU, copper. CU is copper. Now, copper is number 29. So two in the first one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Eight and two is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And now you've put 20 in there, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Yeah, you know what's going to happen. And this is what happens. That one is removed from there and placed up here. So it is 3D10 and 4S1. Now, those two, CR and CU, number 24 and 29, are the exceptions to the rule. And that is what you really have to know about electronic configurations now. What I want you also to hear are three words before we finish. You have energy levels, you have sub levels, and then you have orbitals. Now, I need to make sure that you're clear about them. You know what the definition of an energy level is, the uh, energy occupied, the fixed level of energy that electrons occupy within an atom. An orbital is a region in space where the probability of finding an electron is high. Now, this is where it gets a little tough. If I had a pen, I would love to be able to draw a line straight across there. Oh, no, I've clicked it forward. Straight across there and straight across there as well and straight across there that would be dividing this energy level from that energy level from those three energy level that's an energy level as well so if you were asked how many energy levels can you see the electrons are occupying you can see electrons are occupying the one they're occupying the second energy level. They're also occupying the third energy level and they are also occupying the fourth. So there are four energy levels being occupied in this particular electronic configuration. How many sublevels? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a sublevel, that's a sublevel, that's a sublevel, that's a sublevel. And that's seven. There are seven sublevels being occupied by electrons. It doesn't matter whether it's singly or double, they're being occupied. And the last thing is how many orbitals are occupied? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So you have three words energy levels when you see this 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 a four a three a two and a one so four energy levels one sub level two sub level three sub level four five six seven sub levels and then the orbitals are the actual ones the little boxes the ones that are occupied by a maximum of two electrons now thank you for watching this grade Academy lecture. Until next time, happy learning.